Welcome to our program Moments with St. Edith Stein in search of meaning in these times. An exploration of the person of St. Edith Stein known in Carmel as Teresa Benedicta of the Cross and how she brings meaning to our own tumultuous age. Our host for this program is Father Richard of the Annunciation, OCD. Praise be Jesus Christ, now and forever. We are now on our day three on this program, Moments with Saint Edith Stein, in search of meaning in these times. Welcome. We are so happy that we continue the journey of knowing more and loving more our dear Saint Edith Stein. And as we have experienced for the past few days, we are edified by her presence as we journey on in these trying times. So we begin with this program by Novena Prayer. But before that, we will have the lighting of the candle which we have received from the very Carmelite monastery of our dear Saint Edith Stein in Cologne, Carmel. We also have here the relic of our dear Saint Edith Stein, though it's that first relic, first class relic, it is the second class relic because as we all know, she died from the gas chamber in Auschwitz. Now, with her presence here, second class relic, her picture, and the spirit of St. Einstein, we will now pray this novena for the third day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Prayer of Saint Teresa Benedicta of the Cross. O Prince of Peace, to all who receive you, you bring light and peace. Help me to live in daily contact with you, listening to the words you have spoken and obeying them. O Divine Child, I place my hands in yours. I shall follow you. O oh, let your divine life flow into me. I will go unto the altar of God. It is not myself and my tiny little affairs that matter here, but the great sacrifice of atonement. I surrender myself entirely to your divine will, O oh Lord. Make my heart grow greater and wider out of itself into the divine life. O oh my God, fill my soul with holy joy, courage and strength to serve you, and kindle your love in me, and then walk with me along the next stretch of road before me. I do not see very far ahead, but when I have arrived where the horizon now closes down, a new prospect will open before me, and I shall meet with peace. How wondrous are the marvels of your love. We are amazed, we stammer and grow them, for word and spirit fail us. Prayer to Saint Teresa Benedicta of the Cross, Saint Edith Stein. Lord God of our fathers, you brought Saint Teresa Benedicta to the fullness of the science of the cross, at the hour of her martyrdom, fill us with the same knowledge, and through her intercession, allow us always to seek after you the supreme truth, to remain faithful until death to the covenant of love, ratified in the blood of your Son, for the salvation of all men and women. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh, dear sister Teresa Benedicta of the Cross, child of the Day of Atonement, 
Yom Kippur, daughter of Abraham, bride of Christ, seeker of truth, scholar of the church, handmaid of Our Lady of Mount Carmel, servant of the suffering servant, presence of mercy, victim of victimizer, embracer of the cross of Christ-like love, martyr of art's wits, imitator of Jesus, conqueror of evil, friend of God, Saint Edith, please pray for me. In brief silence, we pray for our personal intentions. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and the hour of our death. Amen. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. O Saint Edith Stein, Sister Teresa Benedicta of the Cross, pray for us. O Saint Edith Stein, Sister Teresa Benedicta of the Cross, pray for us. O dear Saint Edith Stein, Sister Teresa Benedicta of the Cross, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. We will now revisit a glimpse of her life at Freiburg. In April of 1916, Edith's master, Edmund Husserl, received an academic appointment in Freiburg University, which meant that Edith too would have to travel there in order to undertake the examination for her doctorate. Two incidents happened en route to Freiburg that signaled a small change in the heart of Edith Stein, the atheist. In the first, a student friend by the name of Hans Lips told her about a phenomenologist who had converted to Christianity. Hans asked Edith, Are you by chance also among them? Edith replied in the negative, No, I do not belong. But as she recounted later, I almost said, Unfortunately not. The second incident happened when a friend took her to see the Cathedral of Frankfurt. There she witnessed a woman who had just finished her shopping enter into the empty church and knelt at prayer. This was intriguing to Edith. In her experience with synagogues and Protestant churches, people only prayed during services. Now here before her was a woman who entered an empty church as if to have an intimate conversation. Edith's examination was successful and she garnered top honours as well as the opportunity to work as Husserl's assistant. This was a dream come true. However, reality is often disappointing. The time spent working under Husserl was difficult. They had varying ideas of how to work together and eventually she left her position. Despite the working difficulties, Husserl gave her an excellent recommendation and proposed her to be qualified as a university lecturer. For her part, Edith continued to hold Husserl in high esteem. Dear friends, brothers and sisters, lovers of St. Edith Stein, we have just watched that short video of her life at Freiburg. On our first day, we revisited her life in Breslau, the place where she was born at the same time grew. Now Breslau, I think, is now in modern Poland, not anymore in Germany. And then yesterday, we went to Göttingen, where she had her academic years. Now, we will know more about St. Edith Stein as an academician, as a philosopher.
as an intellectual giant because she became the assistant of the father of phenomenologist, very well known, Edmund Husserl. Because in 1916, Edmund Husserl was appointed as a head or director in the University of Freiburg. Because Edith Stein is, was the assistant, she followed her teacher, her master, for her to continue her studies and academic profession. And one important thing, achievement, that our dear Saint Edith Stein achieved there is her successful defense of her dissertation. And we have a copy of this here. This book now, the title is On the Problem of Empathy. This dissertation work was successfully defended and our dear Saint Edith Stein obtained summa cum laude in this work through the assistance of the father of phenomenology, Edmund Husserl. So our dear Saint Edith Stein is indeed a academic and philosopher that can teach us a lot of uh, the, the ways of finding meaning. And she came to a very basic reality in our human existence. And that is on the reality, on the realm of empathy. Empathy. As she also uh, defined in her dissertation, empathy is the experience of foreign consciousness in general, irrespective of the kind of the experiencing subject. In short, empathy is the experience of the other experience, the experience of the other person. It's very basic that, yes, we are individual person, but how can we connect to other person who exists in this world? who exists in our environment. It's a question, how can we understand others despite their individuality, despite their uniqueness? How can their experience be touching, be relevant to me as a separate subject? And that is what empathy would like to to inculcate more in us. In these trying times, we are still in this difficult phase of this pandemic. Here in Manila, Philippines, we will start again our moderate ECQ. It seems we are going back again to the former ECQ because we were experiencing, especially yesterday and for the past days, 5,000 cases of coronavirus. And we are already at 100,000 cases, total cases. And this is not just the experience of the Philippines, but also the experience of the whole world. And also in the Diocese of Cubao, uh, starting today, public liturgical celebrations are still are suspended because we would like to be more sensitive, especially to the needs of our frontliners and also the people who are at the service in this kind, in these times. Empathy calls us to put ourselves in the shoes of others. We hear our frontliners. We hear our brothers and sisters affected and also really crushed 
in these situations. But on this exposition of empathy, that we can connect, we can understand, not only understand, but somehow journey with our brothers and sisters. Yes, they are individuals, but at the same time, they are part of our family. They are part of our humanity. Here, St. Edith Stein would teach us on this reality of empathy, especially in these trying times. Let us be empathic. Let us put ourselves on the shoes of others. This is a search of meaning in these trying times. Now, we will go to the very interesting and very important segment of this moment to Edith Stein. We will not just talk on the academic side, but rather on experiential uh, dimension of people who have been in love with our dear Saint Edith Stein. In our first day, our guest is from Germany. Now, uh, yesterday, uh, it, he comes from uh, United Arab of Emirates. Now we are blessed with another uh, lover, friend of St. Edith Stein. He comes from Singapore. So we will now uh, start our conversations with our friend from Singapore, and we will call him to share more about his love and devotion to her. Hello? Yes, brother. Brother Rafael of the Cross. Uh, our Hi, Father. OCD uh, Hello, student you. friar. Yes. No. Welcome to the moments with St. Edith Stein. Hello there. Yes, thank you for having me here. Thank you also. I'm glad for, to be here. Thank you also for accepting our invitation. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, so you're coming from Singapore. Um, what is the time now there? Yes. And uh, will you please also... There's no time difference. Uh, no time difference. Ah, so it's 3 yeah. o'clock here, 3 o'clock there. So good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, may you also greet us. Are you speaking uh, Mandarin in uh, uh, Cantonese? Uh, will you please uh, okay. greet our uh, participants, viewers? In your language. Okay. Uh, Ben Shusman Hayo uh Okay, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> I am so happy to to uh, to talk to you now, though I have not met you personally, Brother Rafael. I have not seen you in person. I have not met you. Uh, I have just heard you from our dear student here, who is very uh, committed, Brother Reginald, that we can invite you and thank you. Uh, you are here now. Um, you are Brother Rafael of the Cross. Mm -hmm. no? uh, what a beautiful religious name. Uh, will you please also uh, tell something more about this name? It seems you are related to St. Teresa Benedicta of the Cross. And then you are also Brother Rafael of the Cross. Am I right? <laughs> uh, yes, yes. Okay, so why of the Cross? is because St. John of the Cross, he, his writing has had a huge impact on me in my... Uh, Early, earlier days, in my younger days, and it is because of him that I, I eventually joined Carmel. And much later on, when I, came, when I came to know Benedict of the Cross, I, I find that there was so much similarity, and uh, her work on the signs of the cross was 
was so brilliant that that it, it really encouraged me to to choose this as my religious name. And you know, when we look at the cross, is is really God's love in a very tangible uh, manner that we can see. I mean, God has always loved us, but it is on the cross that we could see in a very tangible manner. Yeah. Indeed, no, as the experience of our dear Saint Edith Stein, the cross stands um, very um, manifesting the love and the uh, glory of the Lord. Ave crux pes unica. Uh, may I just also um, hear from you, uh, your experience. How did you discover Saint Edith Stein in your journey, in your life? Where did okay, all start? Okay, so... So in when when I joined in 2017, uh, I was a first year philosophy student. Then during this course on modern and contemporary philosophy, I came across her name. But uh, her philosophy, or rather phenomenology, wasn't covered in the course. So when the lecturer asked us to 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 write an assignment on, and that we are free to choose any philosopher during that era, I thought, why not? choose uh, St. Edith Stein because she's a Carmelite. So on the one hand, I get to know one of our saints. On yes. the other hand, uh, I get to present her philosophy to my classmates. And of course, being new to philosophy, uh, I struggle a lot with, with their language and, and with their way of thinking. So I, I actually prayed to St. Edith Stein frequently. She was kind of like my patron saint whenever I have exams and and what not. So I, I remember I, I, I had a, an oral exam for one of my philosophy subject, and I asked for an intercession. And, and yeah, the, the, the whole process was very smooth for me. Mm -hmm. So that's how I had my personal relationship with her. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, she started to journey with you, especially on the moments that uh, you are in this uh, academic journey also, and mm -hmm. also in your philosophy years. Am I right? Yeah, it's true. Mm. And, then I, correct. Mm -hmm. and then I also learned from, from you, from background information, that you made a paper, academic paper, about her. And um, the paper uh, is about uh, St. Edith Stein, uh, her philosophy, her life. Am I right? Uh, yes, correct. Mm -hmm. um, you know the academic paper, uh, especially uh, on this uh, on these uh, moments. If you read them, it will really be of help to us. Can you please uh, share to us what is the message that you have written on this academic paper? Um, okay, so uh, the the one overarching principle that that you need to know is that. For her, philosophy is not just an intellectual hobby to tickle your mind. Okay. Because the way you think affects the way you live. And that's how her, her philosophy has been. Because every work that she published, you can see that is there's a correlation to the events that happen in her life. So in my paper, I broke up uh, to two main categories. The first category is introduction to her life. First but category. the introduction to her life is in the context of her philosophical work and her life experience. So you will see that whatever work that she does, you know, somehow her experience uh, helps her in her writing. Then the second category of my paper is introduction to her philosophy. And the work that I've chosen was her earliest work on the problem of empathy and then her much later work on there's this uh, essay uh, that she wrote an imaginary conversation between Husserl's phenomenology and St. Thomas Aquinas so by that time right she she was already acquainted with the scholastic philosophy she translated Newman's work she translated uh, the disputed questions on truth and so her philosophy has developed very much because uh, she's open to various schools of philosophy, the scholastics, and as well as faith data. So, so by putting her early work and her later work together, you can see that there is this, there is always this openness to search for the truth, to 
to develop her philosophy and and her her study on person the 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 makeup of a person you will find that in the science of the cross she mentioned more about spirit and soul and 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 that really helps you to understand saint john on the cross because when saint john on the cross deals with the dark night of the soul he he jumped directly into how to do the purgation but uh in this time in her the science of the cross she elaborated on the structure and the activity of the soul and the spirit so there's a distinction that basically for the the soul is affected by what is external but at our most inner that that's the spirit where where god dwells and is unaffected by by the what is happening on the outside at that at that point when you reach the spirit even your spiritual faculties are are in suspension so so that's her unique contribution to John the Cross there Yes, yeah. uh, Brother Raphael, I am so stunned with the words like phenomenology, empathy, philosophy, science of the cross. Uh, these are big mm. words. At the same time, they are uh, content laden, um, just in a very experiential way. How can these words connect to our present situation? We're, you're talking about phenomenology, you're talking about empathy, you're talking about uh, yes. in search of truth, you're talking about science of the cross, dark night. How can all these terms at this point connect to our day-to-day -day situation? Okay, so uh, if, we, if we look at our world today, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, there are a lot of uh, confusions and rumors, propagation of falsehood online, I see. And, and also, uh, people are, you know, you see cases of racism uh, and people are, they are increased in violence and conflict and so on. So really, uh, it's not so much different from St. Edith Stein's time. And, you know, she, she lived through uh, World War I and, and then was plunged into World War II. And she was a nurse in World War One, and there she encountered so much pain, suffering, and death. And that was also a time where, after which she wrote the problem of empathy, which studies uh, basically intersubjectivity. Mm -hmm. And 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 from there, she she continued on her her philosophical work in psychology, in the philosophy of psychology and science, and so on. Mm -hmm. So, how relevant is she to us? You you might ask. Okay, for one thing, the love of truth uh, lead her to God, and that even when one is very helpless in the face of evil, it is her faith that got her through the difficult time and all the way even unto her martyrdom. So, you know, like in her time when Nazi Germany was persecuting her people based on pan-Germanism, which is which contains irrational. Uh, racist ideology she did whatever she could you know and that includes publishing a treatise on an investigation concerning the state in 1925 basically that treatise is to exalt humanity as one community and is precious beyond measure and that our diversity our diversities is a gift to the world and this is actually quite in stark contrast to the racist ideology that the Nazis were propagating and we see that today we all more than ever in this pandemic we really need uh, to see each other as brothers and sisters and to really help each other out because everyone is suffering but those who are poor those who are already poor and vulnerable they are more adversely affected than anyone else yes. and really if we see each other as, as a community as she advocates then we really have to really have to bring out our love and bring out our help to others and and to resist that that hatred mm -hmm. those words are very um, compact mm. lover of truth seeker of truth even in the midst of falsehood and evil and you have uh, soundly and concretely um, put saint edith stein where we are now into no as you have seen uh, now, uh, you are already um, uh, narrating to us a lot of falsehood, a lot of 
a lot of uh, falsities around. Uh, but here, if we find truth, seek truth, and live truth, uh, we will not be at a loss. Am I right, brother? Yes, father. Mm -hmm. um, yes. So now in Singapore, Singapore is, um, well, no, they are very, uh, also, they have passion for reading, uh, for intelligence, for academic learning. No? Um, in Singapore, uh, especially the young people now, um, do you see uh, an interest on, on the ways St. Edith Stein uh, is, um, is promoting, uh, presenting? Uh, is St. Edith Stein little by little known in Singapore? Wow, that is hard to say because <laughs> I, I I haven't really heard about her even in general in the in the in the academic uh, circle. You know, yes. like like you just have to check in with universities and and you see whether they are teaching her philosophy or not. Mm. I think the problem is that because she died so young and also. Uh, her work gets buried, but there's so much treasure and depth in it that it just needs to be promoted. Yes. And mm. people will come to appreciate her work, really. And people here are, are, are open to, to ideas and all. And I think we need that, that sharpness, that tool to, to discern what we read, what, what, what is being propagated to us. Yeah. And, and you know, her attitude mm, is mm. worthy of imitation. Brother Rafael, uh, there is a reason for everything. Perhaps uh, you are invited here and then you are giving us this uh, uh, sharing about St. Edith Stein because we begin from these little endeavors and by these little efforts that we have, especially your love and devotion to St. Edith Stein and your academic studies for, of, about St. Edith Stein, who knows? And you as a Carmelite now in Singapore delegation, um, you, little by little, can share and spread these messages of our dear St. Edith Stein. Am I, am yes. I making sense? <laughs> yes, yes, all, all, in God's time, all in God's time. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Any last message? Um, now um, that we are approaching the feast of our dear St. Edith Stein on August 9th, and then you also as a Carmelite student friar in Singapore delegation, um, what message can you give us, especially nowadays that uh, we are in difficult situations? Yeah, you know, like, St. Einstein is not unfamiliar with suffering, but just look at her attitude. I will give you a quote from her. Okay, okay? Mm, that's very so important. She, she wrote, I keep thinking of Queen Esther, who was taken away from her people precisely because God wanted her to plead with the king on behalf of her nation. I am a very poor and powerless Esther, but the king who has chosen me is infinitely great and merciful. This is a great comfort. So, you see, in the face of evil, never stop praying, as she herself saw herself as Esther and, and continue to, to pray and to intercede. And even though you know, in the end, things may not may not uh, be. She may not be immediately delivered from immediate evil, but in her surrender to God, Christ crucified became incarnate in her. That's why Ave Crux Spex Unica. Her surrender allowed the Father to conform her to be more like her Son, and and that is what we all Christians should strive for to imitate Christ and to allow ourselves to be conformed to Christ. Yes, Brother Raphael, we could not but thank you for those powerful messages that you have uh, reflected on the life and philosophy of our dear Saint Edith Stein. We hope that we can see you in person and then we hope also that we continue to journey on, especially in this um, school in Carmel, wherein we are blessed with uh, many saints like St. Edith Stein. I hope that uh, you can visit us in the Philippines or we can go to Singapore. Yes, sure. Hopefully. <laughs> yes. Hopefully no? I can see you in person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank so, you, Father, for having me here. Share. Am I right? 
Sache, <laughs> Brother Rafael of the Cross, OCD of the Singapore delegation. Those words that he has given to us are very um, powerful. In the face of evil that we are into, in the midst of difficulties, in the midst of crisis, seek the truth. Seek God. And I will add more to that. Truth has a name. And in the experience of saint at its time, that truth is Jesus Christ. Now we will end with these quotes from our dear saint at its time. The entire educational process must be carried out with love, which is perceptible in every disciplinary measure and which does not instill any fear. And the most effective educational method is not the word of instruction, but the living example, without which all words remain useless. So there you have uh, heard, you have read the quotes from our dear saint at its time. No? Uh, it's a beautiful quote. <laughs> Uh, uh, the quote talks about um, witnessing, experience, and that experience of love. No? Uh, well, Einstein is intellectual giant, he's an academician, he's a, she's a philosopher, but uh, like, like anyone else, all the saints, what matters most is our love witnessing. And whatever field that we have, we have seen that love matters most. We witness because of love. So that's our third day of moments with our dear Saint Edstein. Before we bid goodbye and thank you, uh, I would like, like to um, greet because uh, we are so blessed that so many um, dear brothers and sisters, devotees of uh, our dear Saint Edstein who watch us who make their way to watch us and join us. And then we have three sisters or three brethren who are celebrating their birthdays today. And I would like to greet them because uh, they belong to the communities named after St. Edith Stein. Her name first is Edna Estepa Arquiza, OCDS. I think she is the OCDS Provincial Secretary. Uh, their community in Nagkarlan, Liliu, and um, here in Makati are named after Saint at its time. So, with all the communities now watching us, and also her and Sister Edna Stepa, happy birthday. And also, Jamie Lee Norris, also a devotee of the year Saint at its time. And Brother Ben Rosales, he belongs to the parish of Saint John of the Cross in here in Valenzuela City. And to all our dear sisters and brothers who are always um, loving, learning, and discovering the treasures of our saints, especially Saint Einstein, from the Philippines, from Pampanga, Angeles, here in Manila, Visayas, Iloilo, Cebu, da down to Mindanao. And then we are not just only in the Philippines, but around the world because St. Edith Stein message is resounding, especially in these times. So we will now close our third day of our moments with St. Edith Stein until tomorrow, because tomorrow is extra special also, because we will have another guest very close to our place our neighbor just here, but he is now a priest in the Diocese of Kubao, who is also a lover, a friend of St. Edith Stein. I hope that you continue to join with us until August 9 on the Feast of St. Edith Stein, and we see each other again, same time, 3 p.m., same channel, Man Brown TV, Facebook page of Samahang Man Brown, moments with our dear Saint Edith Stein in search of meaning in these times. 
mabuhay.